Hey everyone, I'm Anja here at OurGibbleThome.com. Welcome in my kitchen. And today I thought I'd hop on here and talk about sourdough. I have two sourdough videos, which I will be linking in the box below this video. One is how to make a sourdough starter. So if you're completely new to sourdough, I suggest you start with that. And then I have another one that is called Easy Sourdough Starter, No Feedings no discards and that is really about how you can maintain your starter once you have made your starter so basically first you make a starter and then how you maintain a starter i also uh, suggest that you watch this video if you're completely new to this method and people love my method not everybody does but a lot of people do and I get so many questions that I thought I would pop on here and answer all your questions. I have been baking with sourdough for four decades. I really was introduced to sourdough when I was watching, as a little kid, my mom growing up in Germany making sourdough bread. And she would sometimes ask me, oh, can you put the bread from the bowl in the loaf pan? Or can you do this or can you do that? So I really got a feel for what it should look like without being officially introduced with measurements and how to make it and all that. Having said that, if you are somebody who loves measurements and who wants exactly everything written out, then this may not be the method for you because I really go by feel and consistency and because I'm so comfortable with it. So again, if that's you, then this may not be the best method for you. And again, there are so many different methods of how you can start a starter and maintain a starter that I'm sure there's something for everybody out there. Thank you everybody for leaving a comment or a question on my sourdough videos. If that's you, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I love answering your questions and that is what I'm gonna do in this video. A lot of you have commented on how my sourdough method is such a relief and just, you know, <laughs> It is a very different method and you don't have to do daily feedings, you don't have to do discards and it's really perfect for anybody who bakes occasionally once a week or maybe twice a week or somebody who doesn't want a sourdough starter on the counter and just wants to bake whenever they want to bake. Also, I have a number of sourdough recipes on this channel, however, I'll be linking the two most requested videos in the box below this video and one is for my artisan no need kind of white um, sourdough bread I'll be leaving that link below and then I have another one since I'm German I'm very partial to a denser whole grain German bread and I will also linking that in the box below this video what's also neat is that when people were commenting on my sourdough method a lot of people said that's exactly how my grandparents did it and I learned that many grandparents or great grandparents kept a sourdough starter in the bag of flour so they would um, mix it up with flour and just stick it into the flour and whenever they wanted to bake it they would take it out and then um, add water to it and proceed as i'm describing in my method so i thought that was really neat to learn that and i'm so happy that it brings back memories for those of you that mentioned that if you have more questions, please, please, please leave them in the comments below this video. As I said earlier, I love answering all your questions and engaging with you in that way. Questions that people have asked. Can you make a gluten-free sourdough? Yes, you can. I personally have not tried making a gluten-free sourdough starter. It's a little bit of a different process. You can use, I guess, teff flour, buckwheat flour, and there's another flour, but I am not an authority on it. I haven't tried it, so I'm not gonna talk about it because I only wanna talk about the things that I have personally experienced with and um, feel like I have something to say about. However, people have also asked, can you use einkorn in other grains? Yes, you can. Einkorn is a little bit different. Um, it's an, an ancient uh, variety of wheat. You can use that and you just kind of adjust since I'm not giving you exact measurements, 
you will be going for consistency and for feel. Um, you may have to add just a little bit more water because it soaks it up a little bit better, but Einkorn works just as well and you can use spelt, you can use rye, you can use other grains, you just basically transition it and I've never had a problem transitioning my sourdough between one or the other. By the way, I have a uh, white sourdough starter sitting in front of me and a whole grain sourdough starter and these are the ones that are in my fridge in their inactive state. I have just baked with my whole grain sourdough starter and um, this one is what I use for my artisan style bread. What do I do when I get liquid on top of the starter? If you have a sourdough starter and you have this liquid that separates and sits on top of your starter, that's called hooch. And typically what that is or means is that your starter is hungry and needs to be fed. I have successfully mixed it under and you, I've just added a little bit more flour because you will notice that the consistency will be very runny if you have that water, that hooch sitting on top. And again, I'm going for consistency with my starters. You basically want something like a thick pancake dough. That's the consistency you want to go for. So if people ask me if you take 100 grams of flour and 100 grams of water, is that gonna be what I need? And I can't tell you exactly, but that sounds about right. But then again, if you start with 150 grams or 100 grams or whatever with water and flour, you can look at the consistency and then decide if you need to add one or the other just a little bit more to get that thick pancake batter kind of consistency. Okay. Um, how can I make it more or less sour? So I got both questions. Some people really love the extra sour sourdough and, and other people say, oh, I actually like it a little bit better when, when it's less sour. There are certain things that will determine the sourness of your sourdough starter. One is obviously how old it is, the riper it is, the more sour it tends to be. And then temperature, uh, bacteria and yeasts in the air. And you can also add salt to it. So if you want to make it more sour, you let it sit a little bit longer. And if you want to make it less sour, you can also add a little bit of salt to your um, bread dough because salt will decrease the sourness or the activity of your sourdough starter in the final bread. So depending on where you are on the spectrum, you can dial it up and down a little bit. And I hope that this answers that question. How do I know whether the sourdough starter is ripe? That's a really good question. So if you're making a sourdough starter, um, one way to know is when you open up your jar, and you smell it, it should have a pleasantly sour smell. If you smell it and it's like uh, really strong, then it probably is too strong. What I would suggest in that moment is that you take half off and you can do a discard and just add a little bit more flour to it or use less starter. So you can always, like I said, dial it up and down. You can also do the floating test that you take a pinch of a, this is an inactive sourdough starter, but if you have an active sourdough starter sitting on your counter, you can take a little bit of your sourdough starter and drop it in the glass of water. If it floats, it's ripe. And if it sinks, it's not ripe. I, when I have a sourdough starter going that I'll be baking with, I often tap on the bottom. And if it has a really hollow sound, that also gives me an indication of whether it's good to go. What I recommend, this is my little trick here, if you're not quite sure about the ripeness of your sourdough starter and you want to bake bread, just add about a teaspoon of yeast. Um, yeast is part of what is in your sourdough. It's just sort of isolated out and you can add a little bit of yeast as a, basically an insurance that your bread will rise. You won't notice the difference in the taste. It is still a sourdough bread with a sourdough taste and all the health benefits of sourdough, if that's what you're going for. But you will make sure that it actually rises. Where to keep the sourdough starter once you add the water the night before. As I said in my method, you take the sourdough starter like this out of the fridge the night before you want to bake. 
let's say you want to bake on Wednesday, you take it out on Tuesday evening. And as I said, it is really packed down and dried up with flour. You add some water to it. And I just like to take a fork and you mix it all up. Let it sit on the counter overnight. And then in the morning or the next day you can bake, let's say on Wednesday. Does it need a tight fitting lid? As you can see here, I do have these jars that have very tight fitting lids. Yes, when I put my sourdough starter in the fridge, I have a tight fitting lid. Mostly I do that because otherwise it becomes even drier. Your refrigerator will dry foods out. So that's why I put a tight fitting lid on it. Once I have it on the counter, I've done both. I have added the water and then closed the lid and it's very tight fitting and let it sit there. And I have also cracked it like this. So there's a little bit of airflow. I have beeswax wraps that I put over it or just a towel. And I have heard people say either one, I did a little bit of research and according to my research, it doesn't really matter so much. Mostly you want to keep your sourdough from getting anything in it that doesn't belong in there. So in the summer, let's say you have fruit flies in your kitchen, which does happen in my kitchen. You don't want them in your sourdough starter. So that's why you want to cover them. But as I researched, it doesn't really matter if it's tight fitting or just kind of a loose cover. My sourdough starter method, making a sourdough starter from scratch, I use flour and some water and some buttermilk. People ask me, can I use lemon or vinegar and add that to milk and then make my sourdough starter? That is completely different. The buttermilk that I'm adding when I'm making a new sourdough starter is a cultured buttermilk. So you want these cultures, these life active cultures. If you add lemon or vinegar to milk that's curdled and you can use the buttermilk for making pancakes, but it's not gonna give you the same result. People have also asked me, can you use yogurt or kefir instead? I personally haven't tried it, but I would imagine it works really well because yogurt, if it has life active cultures and kefir has the same, then it should in principle be the same as buttermilk. If you do try it out, please leave me a comment below and let me know how that worked. My starter is very strong. I prefer a milder one. So as I said earlier, if your starter is very strong, you can divide it and um, throw some out or take a little bit less. Let's say I have, um, this is probably about a cup of the sourdough starter in here. If I were to make a bread, I could only use half of it and return the other half to the fridge unused. And then I might even start it on a Monday night and add some more flour and smell it and look at it and see how I like it on Tuesday and then bake on Wednesday. I got mold on my starter, what should I do? Um, some people describe mold around the rim or on top of the starter, and this is a little bit tricky. So I can't really give you a remote diagnosis. However, I have found if you just have a little bit of mold on the rim, I'm gonna talk about why that could be. You could carefully wipe it off and transfer the sourdough starter to a different container and then continue on from there. If you do have really thick mold growing on the starter, I would probably throw it out. I know that some people have taken it off the top, but I don't know, I would be careful with it. So what could be causing the mold? Sometimes if you have soap residue in your container, if you wash it and there's still soap on it, that can do it. Um, if you haven't really cleaned your container, sourdough is not very picky or complicated, but you do want it clean. You don't need to sanitize your jars, but you do want clean. And if in doubt, I would always throw it out. However, I know that some people have successfully rescued sourdough starter that had just a little bit of mold. And that can also happen when it's very humid and very warm. So temperature and humidity will also affect the activity of your sourdough starter. Should I use all-purpose flour or bread flour? 
that doesn't really matter so much as far as I know. The bread flour probably has a little bit more gluten, so I think it has more of an effect on your bread than on your sourdough starter. I typically use all-purpose flour, and again, I have um, this as I grind my own grains, so I use my own whole grain flour, but this one is mostly white in here, and I just use a regular all-purpose organic wheat flour, and it comes out perfectly. So I think it's really up to you and your own preference. When hydrating, I have a lot of lumps. What do I do with them? In my sourdough method video, I explain how the night before I add a lot of water to this or some water to this and mix it up with a fork. And sometimes I do get lumps in there. I don't worry about it. The worst that could happen is that when you bake your bread, you will have little harder lumps in your bread. It doesn't bother me, but also if you do it, let's say add 6 p.m. on Tuesday night if you want to bake on Wednesday morning, most of it should disintegrate. And if you see on Wednesday morning that you still have some lumps in there, you can still use your fork and kind of um, you know break up the lumps, but they don't really do anything. They don't hurt your bread. It's just a matter of appearance or personal preference. I've had these lumps. I know exactly what you're talking about. If it was you that asked me that question and I didn't find that it hurt my bread at all. Can you freeze your sourdough starter? Well, again, that is something that I have not personally tried, so I can't really speak to it, but I did a little bit of research and apparently you can freeze sourdough starter. Your sourdough starter, when you take it out of the freezer and reactivate it, can be a little bit sluggish, if that's the right word. So if you're in doubt, you can always add a little bit of yeast to your bread to make sure that your bread rises and give that a few bakings and then you should be back to having a nice active starter. If again, if you have any experience with freezing sourdough starter, leave me a comment below and I'd be happy to read it and look at it and learn from you. Do you use distilled water for your sourdough starter? Yes, I do. Most tap water has chlorine in it, and chlorine can really hinder the activation and the, the nice active cultures because chlorine is basically to uh, get rid of any unwanted organisms in the water. So I always use filtered water or distilled water. I also recommend that you do that when you make a starter. So you'll definitely be safer using distilled or filtered water for your sourdough starter. What do you mean when you say you add a lot of flour? In my method, once I have baked, I pinch off um, maybe this much starter and put it back in this jar, and then I add a lot of flour. Basically what you want to do, you want to make your sourdough starter so dry that it is really hard, and I know that some people are um, laughing about me because in my sourdough maintenance video, the easy sourdough starter, no feedings, no discard video, somebody said it looks like her fork is almost breaking. <laughs> yes, it is really dry and really solid and really hard. So I like to pack it down as much as I can. And it really depends since I'm not giving you exact measurements, I'm not telling you, oh, use 100 grams of your starter, but I'm saying just pinch off a little bit. It really depends, but you can't go wrong if you even cover your sourdough starter with half an inch of flour, which I most often do. So a lot of flour really means that a lot of flour. I hope that that helps. How long does it take to make a sourdough starter from scratch? Again, that depends on many different things. It depends on your temperature. It might go a little bit faster in the summer. It might take a little bit longer in the winter. It depends on your humidity. People have commented and said, I live in a really humid place. What do I do? It also depends in the ambient bacteria and yeast that are kind of swirling around in the air that we're trying to capture. So it depends on a lot of different things. And sourdough starter is a living 
organism, if you will. It's almost like a pet. And so I basically, I would say as a rule of thumb, you need probably a week. In my how to make a sourdough starter video, I'm taking you through my process day by day. And these are the original ones. The ones I had before were much older, but in this video, I wanted to show you exactly what happens if I make a sourdough starter from scratch. And there wasn't something happening for many days and it looked a little bit iffy and I was on camera and I wasn't so sure this was all working, but I was confident. And in the end, it might've taken seven or eight days. I would have to go back to the video and look at it. So again, it, you might have a sourdough starter after six days and it might take you 10 days to get a sourdough starter. How much sourdough starter do you need to make bread? Again, that's, it really depends on the size of your bread. And if you have a loaf that is only this big, you obviously will need a little less starter than if you make a big loaf, which we sometimes make, or sometimes I make two loaves at the same time. You best follow the recipe that you're looking at. I, Like I said, I do have a recipe for a artisan no-knead sourdough bread that you can look up and see what I'm doing in there, but it really depends. But sourdough starter is also pretty forgiving. So it's not, again, if you're somebody who likes exact measurements and no fail, somebody has tried and tested and tested and tested the recipe, that is great, but I have found that my sort of go by feel method produces really good results. Why do you add yeast to your bread recipe? In that bread recipe that I just talked about, I am adding yeast and malt, malted barley. <laughs> I couldn't get the word out. Malted barley. And basically what that does, because I wanted a really uncomplicated sourdough bread that is fluffy and has nice holes in it and is really light and airy as compared to my dense German style sourdough bread, I'm adding yeast to it. And yeast will give the sourdough bread a boost. It is still sourdough based and it still has the taste of the sourdough bread and it still has the health benefits. And the malted barley, that is basically a, um, it's basically an activation for your yeast. And you can also add a little bit of sugar or you can just leave it out completely. You can even leave out the yeast and just let the bread rise a little bit longer. So those ingredients are my little secret ingredients that I found are really, make a really good bread. If you don't have them, don't worry about them. Just don't use them, leave them out and proceed with a recipe. You might just let, need to let it rise a little bit longer. Is it okay to use metal with your sourdough starter? In general, I would say use a non-reactive container and non-reactive utensils. However, if I'm just mixing up the sourdough starter or if I'm just adding a bunch of flour to it, the contact time is so little that I'm not worried about it. I have for years, for decades really, used metal forks to mix it up and to pat it down and it hasn't hurt it. And I have also, when I take my sourdough starter out of the fridge, I have used a fork out of the water and mix it up and it hasn't hurt it. What I don't do is let the sourdough starter sit in a stainless steel bowl or in a metal container overnight. And I also don't let my sourdough um, bread rise in a metal container. So a little bit of time is okay, but you don't want to let it sit in there for any length of time. I hope that this answered your questions. As I said, if you have more questions that I didn't answer in this video, please leave them in the comments below. I do my best to answer all your questions. I always love it when I get questions because it means that you're out there doing sourdough and I think it's absolutely fantastic how popular sourdough is. So let me know if you have any more questions and if you found this video helpful, it always means the world to me if you leave me a thumbs up and if you're new on my channel, please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notifications so you get a little notification when a new video comes up, which is once a week. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.